Geometrics and florals, florals and geometrics. No matter which way you pair it, they're a match made in heaven, as I'm going to show you in this latest Sketch Starters with Nicole. For my first project, I'll be using the Geometric Elements stamp and die set, along with the Bursting Dahlia stencil. The colors that I'll be using for both projects today are Teal Cave, Frosty Pink, and Coral Berry. Our latest sketch indicates a pattern background, so I'm going to start with the Bursting Dahlia stencil along with some Teal Cave ink. And I've got my Alta New large blending brush here, and I'm going to go ahead and blend in the Dahlia. And I want this to extend across the entire panel. So after I have this little bit done here, I'm going to move my stencil so I can fill in this space up above and make it really look like a piece of patterned cardstock. So I'll just move that into place and I'm not even going to go back into my ink. I'll let this become a slightly lighter dahlia up here. These blenders hold a lot of ink so it's not difficult to get a nice rich color. And then I'm going to move one more time over here to the corner and just kind of feed those bits of dahlia into each other to really create a beautiful seamless pattern. And with just a little bit of effort, I have a beautiful background ready to take on the rest of this sketch. The next thing I'm going to take care of are my stamped images. So I have the Smile Sentiment from Geometric Elements and a half inch strip of Lagoon cardstock from the Gradient cardstock pack. And I'm going to just stamp the sentiment right on there. It fits perfectly. So there's my sentiment. And then I'm going to stamp the diamond from Geometric Elements onto a piece of watercolor cardstock. All right, so now that I have that stamped, I'm going to do just a little bit of water coloring. This is very loose water coloring and I'll be using Coral Berry and Frosty Pink. So I'm just going to smush some of the Coral Berry onto a palette and some of the Frosty Pink as well. And taking my water brush, I'll get a little bit of water going here and I'm going to just go over this to allow the ink to start moving and I'll go into the Coral uh, the Frosty Pink first. And this is a very light shade, so you may not see it at first on the stamped image here. But I'm basically trying to get it all filled in with this beautiful pink. And then I'll come back in with a little bit of the Coral Berry to start working some of the shading. And like I said, this is a loose watercolor, so this just really takes a second or two to add in a little bit of depth and dimension, not doing anything crazy with it, but just something like that is enough to give us just the hue we're looking for. Once my diamond was dry, I went ahead and die cut it out using my mini blossom die cut machine. So I've got my beautiful gem here along with my sentiment and my background. So we are ready to assemble this project according to the sketch. So just go ahead and glue on this back. And this gets centered right onto the card base. The size of this piece of cardstock is three and a half by four and three quarters. So it gives us a nice, beautiful border all the way around. Then I'm going to take my smile sentiment here. And I'm going to actually bring it so that it goes right through the center of this dahlia and it is going to come right off the edge of the card. So I'll make sure that my spacing here is perfect. There we go. And the last thing I'll do is add on my little gem here with a piece of adhesive foam. So I'll pop that right over the edge here so that way I can hide the end of the sentiment. And now that this has had just a second to dry, I can go ahead and trim it off with my snips. So there we go. Our first card is done. Let's go see how we can flip this around to make another take on this sketch. 
For this second take, our small circular element will be floral, so we'll be using the Mini Delight Petite Posy. And for the background, we'll go geometric using the On Point Stencil. Of course, we'll be using the same color scheme, so Frosty Pink, Coral Berry, and Teal Cave. And I'll pull in a little bit of olive for the leaves of the flower. For the background, we'll be doing a fun ink smushing technique with the stencil. So I have a piece of the A2 watercolor paper from Altenew and I've got my on point stencils. So what I'm going to do is take the teal cave and just pounce it all over until I feel like I have good enough coverage on the stencil. So I'm not worried about getting too little on here. I really wanna have quite a lot of ink and I just need to make sure that I have it wide enough that it's going to cover the piece of cardstock. Now I am going to cut down the cardstock, so if there's a little bit that isn't covered, that's okay. I'll be able to chop it out later. All right, so now that I have my stencil done up, I can move this out of the way. And I've got my piece of cardstock here. So I will take my water sprayer and just spritz this a few times to get that ink to move a little more freely and I'm going to place it down on my cardstock. Before I pick this up, I'm going to take a paper towel, just lay it over the top, press down gently to make sure that I have complete coverage, and then I can lift everything up and reveal the design underneath. And there we go, a beautiful watercolored image using the stencil, and I will set this aside to dry while we work on the flower. This Petite Posy stamp is so much fun to work with. Just like all of the Mini Delights, it is quick and simple. Some Mini Delights have a few different layers and some are just a single. This one happens to have a few pieces to it. So I've got a beautiful dark background and then I have a center piece here that will fill in most of the flower. So I'm going to do this in the frosty pink. And just like all the other flower builder stamps, it does match up perfectly. So if you're new to flower builders, these are a really great one to get started with because it's just the one piece. And then there's this little teeny tiny centerpiece that I'll do up in the coral berry. And you would be really surprised that this makes a difference, but it certainly does. It really finishes off the look of the flower to have a slightly different color in the center. And then I just need to go ahead and add my leaves on, and I'll do that in olive. And there we go. So now that I have my flower done, I just need to die cut this out with my mini blossom, and then we'll be ready to do some more assembly. So now I have my flower all die cut and I have my background panel chopped down. And while I was at it, I went ahead and stamped on the sentiment. This is also from the Petite Posy. And instead of doing it on a strip, I decided that I was just going to stamp it right onto the card base. So even though the sketch does indicate that there is a little strip there, because it really kind of fits the spirit of there being a small sentiment in that place, I figured that I didn't necessarily need to have a strip of cardstock with the sentiment on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue this down. So now we have our beautiful finished background. And just like with the first card, we're going to go ahead and pop this up with a piece of adhesive foam. So just pop my little flower right on there. And now my second card is complete. Which card did you prefer, the diamond card or the petite posy card? Leave me a comment down below and share with everyone your thoughts on today's projects. Don't forget you can find and save these sketches on Pinterest, so that way you have all the inspiration at your fingertips right when you need it. As always, thank you so much for spending some of your crafty day with me. I'll be back soon with another sketch starter, but until next time, happy crafting. Hello crafters, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.